but not what you have seen and heard. No circumstance can be clad what you have seen. There's no situation that can make me not believe, no matter what you tell me, that I can be poor. What you have seen, no force in hell can be cloudy. No circumstance, no economy can make me think of poverty. Because I've seen that wealth is my portion. And it's what you see that determines what you get. What does it mean to see? In Ephesians chapter 1, 17 and 18, it says, The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. To see simply means to understand. Now, if you're talking with someone and then you keep nodding your head, nodding your head, and then all of a sudden, you have people when they talk at the point, they say, okay, I see. What is he saying? Understand. Was he blind before? No, he's only saying all the things we are saying. I couldn't comprehend them. So to see simply means to understand. So when the Bible says the eyes of your understanding, it's simply saying, see something from the word of God. And I pray today that being the first day you will see what God has for you. Yeah. You cannot see it and miss it in life. As far as your eyes can see. Now listen carefully. Whatever you and I will get is a four and a half hour we see. God speaking in Genesis 14 and 15. He said, as far as your eyes can what? Now listen carefully. He said, the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord has prayed for him, lift up the eyes and look from the place where the heart, northward, southward, eastward, westward, for the old land that thou seest. That what? To thee will I get thy seat forever. As far as you see, as far as what? So your understanding level, that means the results you get. Seeing simple means understanding. So our results is based on our level of understanding. I said, we are not going to produce at the same level of results. Because in God's word, in Matthew 13 and 23, it made us understand that we have 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold. Is that true? Is that true, sir? And in Mark chapter 4, he that inherited and understanded the word. 30, 60, and 100. Now, the level to which you understand, that means the level to which you produce your results. So if my understanding level is 40%, that's the level I'll get. So I get my result based on my level of understanding. There are some of you that if your understanding level increases, your prosperity will increase. If your understanding level increases on health, your health will not increase. If your understanding level also increases in your marriage, you have more peace. It is the level of your understanding that determines the kind of results you also get. Where you are now is where your level of understanding is. He said, as far as you can understand, to you do I give it. Because when you see it, you commit God to perform. You can't see it and not commit God to perform. May you see well before these three days will be over. Yeah. This month of faith, may you see well. Yeah. You can't have understanding and not get outstanding results. Now, listen carefully. That you quote scripture does not mean you understand it. A man was reading the Bible in Acts chapter 8 and verse 30 precisely. This man's name is called Topia Eunuch. He said, Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest. That you quote it does not mean you understand it. That you quote scripture does not mean you what? Understand it. Every outstanding result and life is rooted in understanding. You can't understand the truth and not try off. It's understand it what thou readest. We have Bible school today. I said to them, go and tell them that there's a difference between Bible church and Bible school. 
Many think that when they go to Bible school, they've attended service. I say Bible school is like going to work. It is this one at the service. So that you went to Bible school, you now go home. You have not attended service for the day. That one is called school. It's like somebody going to work. And it's when you come for this program, now you say you came to service. But there are people who go to Bible school because from morning to night they quote Bible. They feel that they have attended church. I have some old people I'm taking care of. Understand it's powerful. One does not miss service. Okay, what would someone of 80 years be doing at home? They are not breastfeeding. Two said they will come tomorrow for service. They don't want to come to church. They don't want to say they will not come till tomorrow. They feel that midweek service is only Thursday. They are all old people, but the understanding level is not the same. One is at home from morning to night. I'm the one taking care of them. I'm the one caring for them. They just stay at home. They're not feeding children. They're not feeding grandchildren. They're not doing anything. Moto is there to carry them. They say, I'll come tomorrow. They have no understanding of fellowship. They are the same church, oh, the same church. Understanding is different. Understanding is what? So if you see somebody getting results, the person level of understanding is different. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And you know what? We read only one part of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. But look at what he said. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. But it didn't stop there. He said, and with all thy getting, Get understanding. He said, with everything you're looking for, make sure you get what? Don't just say, yeah, yeah. If you watch church as well, they say, yeah, say, yeah. People don't get results. They get excited, we lack understanding, so they end up being afflicted. They say, yeah, man. Oh, my God. Oh, right on preacher. The man shouting has no understanding. He's just excited, would have been affected, so they end up being afflicted. You know, people shout too much during preaching, hardly get results. Take any preacher, anybody, even pastor, who say, yeah, right on, preacher, right on, right on. You can't be, you can't be listening keenly and be making noise. If you anybody shouting, yes, yes, you don't understand. Because that is a lot to distract you. Yes, yes, right, yes, it's a lie. The man was understand, we calm down to hear. He said in Proverbs 21, verse 16, the man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The man that lacks understanding will suffer what sin has suffered. That's the meaning. He said, any man that lacks understanding, he will remain in the congregation of sinners. That means he will suffer everything an unbeliever suffers. That will not be your portion. Shout it better. Amen. Amen. When you are void of understanding, you are as good as dead. That's the meaning. He said, my people have gone into captivity. There are hundred men are famished for lack of knowledge. Isaiah 5 verse 13. I said, oh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is deadly. Ignorance is what? Every truth you truly discover commits God to deliver. That's why you must go for understanding. If you have not discovered it, you can't recover it. So it is what you discover, you recover. Now, see this scripture, for instance, in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, God speaking to the man Moses. He said, And the Lord said unto Moses, See. I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be the prophet. He said, understand. That was see means what? He said, Moses, understand. I've made you a God. May your eyes open right this month in the name of Jesus. He said, see. See. Understand. When you see, you become. And when you become, you possess. The moment Moses saw, Immediately he took dominion. Before this week will be over, you shall take charge. Yeah. When Moses saw it, oh, Maro Brigadier, he took over until he understood what he was made of. Moses was still afraid. He said, See, Moses, I made you a God unto Pharaoh. You can't see and doubt it. You can't see and fidget. You can't see and panic 
when you understand, your confidence is built. That's why Satan's main target is to blind you from understanding. Look, Satan will want you to remain in ignorance. He doesn't mind you fasting as long as you're ignorant. His major work is to blind people. So do what? In 2 Corinthians 4, 4. He said, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Leaves the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God should shine unto them. He blinds you from seeing the truth. Every form of blindness from the devil, I command them destroyed in your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> His work is to blind people. He said what? He blinds people. He tells them, hey, this is not so. This is not how it should be. But the day the man discovers it, his life will turn around. May your eyes open. <laughs> so Satan blinds people to keep them grounded. To keep them what? Grounded. May every blindfold work of the devil be destroyed in your life. He's a mind blinder, permit me. He blinds people from seeing the truth. But the day you get it, you can't doubt it. Because you can't doubt what you see. Hmm? When you see it, you become it. And what you see just gives you confidence. So faith is not just, oh, I have faith, I have faith. Do you have understanding? When I go further, you know why I'm talking about understanding today. It lays the foundation for faith. No man can walk in faith when he has no understanding. Ah, nah. I've not heard people say, I have faith, I have faith. And then you see them do opposite of what they say they have. I've seen people say, they are sickness. I have faith to be healed. I have faith. And they die. They don't, never had faith. I have faith. I know God will, go. God will do it. And then you see the person who is saying, I have faith. All of a sudden, they do the opposite of what the person says he has. Because the person you are talking without understanding. If you say, I can't be poor. Please have understanding. I didn't say I can't be poor without understanding. No. When Bishop Edebo said he cannot be poor, he had understanding. Me too, I went for my own light to have understanding. You don't use that headlamp to drive your own. Uh-huh. Someone is getting up and saying, I can't be king. Don't just get up and say, I can't be king. Understand first. Mm. Let me say this to you. Winning Starts at the point you know what you are made of. Winning starts at the point, what? You know what you are made of. Because of today's world, I dwell in an area many don't talk about. We know we are gods, talk so much on that. Number one is that you have the mind of Christ. You have the what? Why am I dwelling on the mind today? The major target of the devil is your mind. Is your what? Is your mind? That's not the mind. He said that the God of this world will not what? Blind your mind. So his major target is where? Your mind. So I want to talk on the mind. Now hear this and hear me well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. He said, who had known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him? But we have what? The Bible never said we will have. It said we have. So it's already in a child of God. Listen carefully. God never said we will have. He said we have. How can you have his mind and then be failing? How can you have his mind and not be creative? Bible never said we will have. It said we have it. That means for any believer to be foolish is an anathema. Is that true, sir? Get it clear. When they say all things are passed away, it means including all minds. So by redemption, there was a mind transplant. And I pray you have understanding of what I'm talking about here. From God's word, it said we have. If you have the mind of Christ, it means 
everyone by redemption is supposed to be super creative. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Is that true? John chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. If you read verse 2, verse 3, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Right? They were made by who? Without him, there was nothing made that was made. Who is that? Jesus. Who is that? All things were made by Jesus. By who? I come again. All things were made by who? And who is Jesus? You have his mind. He created all things. That means if you have his mind, you are supposed to be a co-what? You are supposed to be creative. Oh my God, to brother. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. In him is what? Life. And life was the light of men. And life shed in the darkness. Darkness covered in. No. That was the truth and light of every man that came into the world. Is that true, sir? Now listen carefully. Hey. If you have this mind, when you get home, you read to verse 11. If you have this mind, then why are you not getting results? It should provoke you to get angry. How can I have the mind of Christ and not get what? Results. It still has to do with under. Proverbs 3.19, he said, the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding had he established the heavens. He established whatever he has by understanding. Oh Lord, how mindful are thy works in the wisdom that has made them all. The earth is full of thy what? Riches. I wonder for verse 24. So this creative mind, everything we have seen on earth was made by that mind. And that mind is what you have. May it come alive in you right now. Yeah. Lord Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. So everything that you should be to make life comfortable on earth is from the mind. From where? And that's what you have. But somebody is struggling in life. Struggle has come to an end. Yeah. The mind of Christ created the universe. That is the mind you will carry. Tell your neighbor you don't have any reason. To live in shame and reproach. Please see what you carry. If you can't see it, you look like a man who is miscarrying. And you can't miscarry. Hmm? See that you have the mind. Understand that you have the mind of Christ. Now, do you know that this is why God gave you the mind? Hmm? Is to reason. One of the functions is to do what? To reason. Let me say this to you. God can't reason for you. We have this mind, but we don't put it to use. God cannot what? Ah, yeah. <laughs> you know why? People fail a lot. God can answer your prayers, but he can't reason for you. Do you know God shows you plan, but expect you to reason? That's what I said, God showed me, but I don't know why it's not working, because you have not signed up to it. He said, come, let us reason. So the reasoning is that he gave you this mind to put it to use. He said, come. So you take your mind to reason with him, then he begins to show you a way out. Now listen carefully. He said, come, let us reason. So after he show you plan, you pray, you will reason. The reason he gave me the mind is to be able to reason and create things out. You pray, then you reason. You pray to avoid evil, to forget to guide you, but you must put your mind to use, to work. I can tell you 98% of Christians don't use their mind. Yet you have it. Yet you what? They don't understand that this mind is to be used. You say what? If you don't use your mind, permit me to be disused. My greatest success is from my mind. I'm a super thinker. I think multidimensionally. Hmm? Now, understand that I have the word. Man of Christ. That will make you, your listening level will increase. Everything you do, you do what? Now, something can be done by two people. One can spend more money, achieve. One can spend less money. The same thing. The same what? The difference is from how they reason. 
The same thing can be carried out by two separate people. One will spend heavy money, one will spend small money. All has to do with what? How he puts his mind to use. Every time you run into a waste, your mind was not used. Every heavy expenditure, your mind was not put to use. If you put your mind in front of the same thing you're doing, somebody else will do it at a small price. We don't think. He said, I have said it now. Eh? Is there anything we will do again? We have to do it like that now. He's not a thinker. I have not seen people who cook the same soup you cook for 50,000, for 5,000, and it's sweeter than your own. I've seen people cook soup for a very small amount and it's sweeter than what somebody else put all the ingredients. Food is not that much things you buy. Food is how you know how to prepare it. There are wives, they say, only Twitter, I give me to cook soup, only Twitter. And there's a woman who could take Twitter and cook the food. Everybody in the house will eat. That same quality of soup, and I was say, for what? See what he gave me, Twitter, for what? Twitter, for Twitter, in today's market. She cannot put her mind to use. My children are crying. They can't even, they can't, they can't even provide for them to eat. But another woman take the same beans, prepare akala in the morning, beans in the afternoon, more more in the evening. <laughs> she put her mind to use. And I was say, nothing, no protein. My children are eating only carbohydrate, carbohydrate, carbohydrate. And that woman put her mind to use. Please, for goodness sake, Christians, Tax your mind to produce. Tax your mind to produce. Shout hallelujah. Number two for today, you have eternal life. You have what? You have eternal life. I'm going to connect it and then you know where I will end in faith. You have eternal life. Understand that you have what? There's a scripture many people don't read. When I told my peer to read it, they were shocked. I said, read this scripture. Everybody reads John 3.16. We don't read John 3.15. I will tell you something that will shock you today. John 3.15 is the one that leads to 16. But people read 16 without reading 15. Look at what it says. Let me read 16 first. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? When you look at everlasting life, not many will understand. Everlasting life also means eternal life. Now look at verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So when you are born again, you have this way. Every born again child, what you have is eternal life. So here. And eternal life is sickness free. The very life of God is what you carry. Listen carefully. Understand. You don't have an ordinary human life. You have the very life of God. So I hear. You don't have an ordinary life. You have the very life of God. Say, I have the life of God. <laughs> Understand this truth. I have what? Say like a child of God. Say one more time. And if you have love of God, can that life have more sickness? Can HIV stay in that life? Can cancer stay in that life? You can't. Now let I command everything not in him that is in you. Live right there in the name of Jesus. Say, so I have the life of God in me. I have eternal life. He never said you will have, you have it. Understanding makes you enjoy it. John 10 to the 8. Let's see John 10 to the 8. Look at the scripture. And I give unto them eternal life. Eternal life is a gift. And the gifts of God, they are without repentance. Romans, is that through? 11 to 9. I give unto them, what? Listen, listen, if you can catch it. And they shall never perish. Neither shall 
any man pluck them out of my hand. Is dead is too small to kill you when you understand this. Hey, understand this path. I give eternal life cannot be terminated by dead. I give unto them eternal life, my life. And they shall never perish. The word perish, they can never be stripped of honor and dignity. Neither shall any man. So an assassin can't kill you. An arm robber can't kill you. Someone killable. A witch, a wizard can't kill you. He said, neither shall any man pluck them out. It's impossible for you to die untimely. Please don't just quote scripture, understand scriptures. Someone killable. Say it like a child of God. Say it one more time. If you go further to the nine, it says, My father will give them me, he's got all, and no man is able to plot them out of my father's hands. Why? Because they have what? What is their life? What is Zoe? God's kind of life? Is that what you have? Then why are you afraid that you'll be die quick? Why are you afraid that sickness will stay in you? You can't have God's kind of life. Sickness will stay inside of your body. So as I'm talking right now, sickness is leaving somebody's body. Hey. So I see. Say it one more time. It is understanding of this truth that makes you try off. And understanding the truth is the gateway to faith. Gateway to what? Understanding of the word is the gateway to faith. Once you understand God's word, you see where I'm connecting it now? Faith rises. Your faith will keep increasing as long as you understand the word. I understand I have eternal life. My faith will rise. I will never bother about sickness. I understand I have what? The mind of Christ. I know no matter the situation, I will know what to do. So faith. Faith comes through on the... Now, let me say something to you from God's word. For instance, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Do you know what you see? God is not committed. Don't you understand that God is not what? God is only committed to what you understand. Now, look at this scripture. Maybe look for him. It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, and what? To do all his commandments, which he commanded this day, that the Lord thy God shall set the what? Above how many nations? So there's room enough for all of us at the top. Do you believe the word of God? Hmm? I come again. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all thy commandments, not so, which I command this day, that I will set you uh, high. Above how many nations? Is there enough room for all of us at the top? Huh? So no man's success is a reason for any man's failure. If you understand that. God has room for all of us. Is that true? So that somebody's at the top does not mean that you cannot be at the top. So stop looking for scriptural reasons to say, no, I'm not at the top because it's this reason. No, you don't like understanding. The carpenter can be at the top. The doctor can be at the top. Everyone at the top. There's room for us. So there's nobody who is the reason why you're not at the top. Simple on that. But somebody's busy blaming the economy, blaming everybody, clearly blaming the devil. Who is not your problem? Some even blame God. Lack of understanding. There are two all of us at the what? The top. So, understanding is what guarantees our standing in the future. Say, I'm not an ordinary person. Say it one more time. Say like a child of God. Shout hallelujah. Understanding is powerful. No? Is what? Understanding is, have you ever stayed? this? I don't know how tomorrow will look like. Have you ever thought of that before? Huh? Huh? You are afraid of tomorrow, unknowingly. True? You lack on the sun. He said, Are you sure my tomorrow will be better? He said, The part of the jaws. He said, The channel that shines the more to a. So my tomorrow is very sure. He said, I don't know how tomorrow will look like. You know the one who knows tomorrow. So your tomorrow is short. Your tomorrow is. Bleak. You don't have to panic. There's nothing. No economy can make you panic because the people for 18. So your tomorrow will be better than your today. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Simple understanding. Then what is understanding? What is what? Understanding 
is that mental force that converts words into pictures. For instance, in John chapter 11, verse 40, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. He had to tell us, believe, now you see the glory of God. He gave her a mental picture. Just believe, understand. You see, when it was to raise Lazarus from dead. So understand, it converts the words into pictures. Hear this. Understanding makes faith automatic. Understanding makes faith what? Once you understand, faith comes. Let's read a popular scripture, Romans 10, 17. So then faith, comment by what? And by the word of God. Is it that God is speaking tautology? How did God emphasize hearing twice? The second hearing is understanding. Faith coming by hearing and understanding the word. That second hearing is when you understand what God is saying. As many as received him to them, gave you what? Power to become the sons of God. May that grace be released to you right now. As John 1, 12. As many as received him to them, gave you power to become the sons of God. Even to them we believe on his name. What you see, you believe, and what you believe, you supernaturally become of it. Let me say this to you. You can't see it and doubt it. No one doubts what he sees. Now, for instance, I'm going to show you something before we go on. Do you know many people are afraid of what they will wear? Food they will eat? If I ask you now, many people, they say, I don't know how to pay my school fees. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know how we pay our house rent. My children are to go to school. It's confusing me. I don't know. <laughs> if I ask Christians now, put them online and say, what's your problem? They say, huh, Pastor, I don't even know how life will be. Yet the man is not in church to hear the word. Tomorrow night, will line up for prayer. Faith come by what? Faith does not come by laying hands on your head. The man has not heard the word. So how can he go forward? A popular scripture I'm going to read to you. Turn with me to Matthew 6. I'll read 25 to 30. I'll read 25, you read 26. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat and what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. You read verse 26. of you by taking thought can add one cubit on the side that you have been troubling your mind. Have you ever solved the problem? No. Read 28. <laughs> and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now look at the reason why many people cannot get it. This is the reason. Want to go thirty together? Want to go? We are for if God so clothe the grass of the field, we today is and tomorrow is cast into the home. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So faithlessness is the reason you're worrying. The reason why you're worrying is faithlessness. The moment you have faith, you'll be relaxed. You know God will take care of you. So here. Yeah. <laughs> Every worry is a sign of faithlessness. Anytime you worry about what to eat, what to wear, you have no faith. And you can never have faith until you have understanding. And I can tell you 99% of people worry about what to eat, what to wear, what to clothe. And the answer is faithlessness. Is what? Many just think seeking for the kingdom of God, that's what they stop that. It's lack of faith that makes you to worry about things. Mm. Ooh. 
May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. That amen is not the only word. When you have faith, you don't panic. You know what? I have never worried about what we eat when we had no money. I had faith that God would take care of us. I've never worried how things will be done. God will take care of it. You think we've not gone through challenges? We have stayed where there was no food, no money, yet I didn't panic. I knew God would take care of it. Every anxiety is a sign you don't have faith. Every time you don't help us get, it's a sign that you don't trust God. And you lack understanding. He say, if I provide for the birds of the air, is it you, my own, that I will not provide for? Relax. Calm down. God is too big to panic because of your small money. Hmm? One day is too much. Two hours? Too much. We are talking understanding, understanding, understanding. Now, how to gain understanding? Because many of you don't what understand. What understanding? Understanding. Understanding. How to gain what? Understanding. How, should, how can one gain understanding? Number one. Through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Every time you want understanding, go to the Holy Ghost. It's the one that makes us a quick understand. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding. If you read from 1, it says the Spirit of the Lord shall rest. Bring verse 1 for better understanding. There shall come forth a rather the stem of Jesse and the branch shall grow out of it. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall what? Rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of wisdom and what? The spirit of counsel and mind. And spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of what? Quick understanding. So the Holy Ghost makes you of quick understanding. He makes you to understand beyond your teachers. He makes you, when someone will be talking and he will make you understand. And today, be baptized with the spirit of understanding. <laughs> Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So if your earthly fathers know how to give grace, I give the Holy Ghost to them to ask him. Now you say in the name of Jesus, yes. I ask for the spirit yes. of understanding yes. to come upon me in the precious name of Jesus. How do you gain understanding through his word? Through what? Through his word. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of his word giveth light. It giveth understanding. Most times we don't read one part. It giveth what? So God's word that enters you brings understanding. We just read most times scripture, only one part. Which is the of the Lord giveth light. I will stop there. It giveth understanding to unto the. You know what I mean by simple? A man would take the word of God as it is. Complex people will want to have, because this thing when they walk around. That's what the Bible emphasizes simple. The simplicity of the gospel. And in the same scripture, Psalm 109, 169, the B says, Give me understanding according to thy, to thy what? word. Give me understanding according to thy word. So God's word brings what? The more you read it, the more you understand how life should be. The more you study it, the more you understand how things should be. The more you read the word, the more you understand how life, everything. Because you, what is the greatest inheritance you should leave for your children? I was studying of recent, and I'm going to talk to all of my children. The greatest inheritance you leave for your children is not, in fact, tell your children, all of you are parents, say, look, this is my greatest inheritance I want to leave for you. The word. With the word, you get with the word, you will get houses. With the word, you get money. So the greatest inheritance is not houses. The greatest inheritance you leave for your children is the word. Because with the word, they will get everything they are looking for. If you give them houses, they can sell them. You give them cars, they can sell them. 
You put money in your bank, they can use it in one week. The greatest inheritance you leave for your children is the word. Because with the word, they can get everything. So when they are growing, they say, my son, my greatest inheritance for you is the word. Every day woke up, my greatest inheritance for his word. So he will focus on the word instead of material things. Because material things can be gone, but the word in him will be alive forever. Shout hallelujah. So now something come from where? The word of God. Number three way to get understanding is through books. Through what? Books. There are things people have taken time to write. There's no point you killing yourself. Somebody has summarized that topic in a book with proofs. Go and read the book and understand. I got understand of prosperity from the book of Gula Copeland and my mentor's books. Is that true? Now, I have written books, for instance, on prosperity because me have proved all the things that I'm teaching. So, he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. It's in the first year of his reign. I, Daniel, understood by what? There are some topics you will never understand until you read anointed materials or materials delivered to the area you are looking for understand. So, there's no point killing yourself. Go for the materials in the area you want to understand. So here. Hmm? Go for matches. It will be stupid of you to say you want to search from Genesis to Revelation. Over something somebody has taken time to search for. Hmm? Can imagine you now say, I want to search from Revelation to from prosperity. Your lifetime, you may not find it. There are people who have taken time to discover. So why not go and read their books and solve, solve the problem? Do you know there are Christians, there are churches where they don't read books. See, see also, they are so indoctrinated to a point that the people don't read anything book. There are people you give, you say, take this book and read. You will know how to marry your wife. They say, no. <laughs> Yet you see the man lacks on the... Number four. Through prophetic connection. Through prophetic what? You understand through prophetic connection. There are people who can expand God's word to you. As of the Apostles chapter 8, 26, 31. The Ethiopian eunuch was held by who? Philip. By who? Philip. Philip was the one that expanded the scripture to Ethiopian eunuch. So there are people who, when they teach, now for instance, there are some things you read. When I come to teach, you understood it better. So, there are people who you connect to them as they begin to teach, you understand the word of God better. So you connect to them. When you sit under them, they expand the scriptures, make it so simple to you, and you have it better understand. So that's when it comes through their teachings. Through their what? Teachings. Teachings of the priest. Someone said, I make the Bible look too simple. So that I, I piece it to even a literate can understand when I teach. I don't speak boom, boom, boom. I've simplified teaching. Very simple. Ethiopian eunuch, if Philip never met him, he wouldn't have understood what he was reading. So you get connected to such persons to feed you with knowledge and understand. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. He said, I give you pastors according to my heart. We shall feed you with knowledge and what? Your connectivity to them brings you to another level of understanding. You sit under them how many of you now enjoy what you're you, today? Very simple teaching. You're enjoying it? That's what we mean. That's just practical thing I'm talking about. Finally, number five, obedience to his word. Obedience to his word. Obedience to his word. Give it understanding. Shall we read Psalm 111, 10b? Psalm 111, 10b. Good understanding of all they that do his commandments. A good what? Understanding of all day that do what? His commandments. When you do his commandments, you have good understanding. Well, welcome to a mountain of understanding. You keep winning. You keep winning. You keep winning. Now, you are going to pray for what? Understand. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. 
17 and 18. I want to pray seriously because you can't get faith or you have what? So that's why I see my lady's foundation. Faith will never come until you understand. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of what? He may give unto you means that you have to ask. Ask shall be what? So if he may give unto you, then I have a responsibility to do what? To ask. Spirit of wisdom and not revelation, the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your, verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding be what? Right. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory in his editors, in the says, Lord, I want my understanding to do what? Open up. How do I connect it? You use a mystery. Look at your hands. Are you created in the image of God? Are you creating the image of God? Yes, and Habakkuk 3, 4, he said, and his brightness was, look at your hand, look at the scripture. And his brightness was as the light and had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the height of his power. So the God's power is where? In your hands? Okay. You shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall do what? So you shall lay hands on even on the mind that does not understand and it will recover. The power of God is where? Your hands. And he said, the, this hand, when you lay it, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 6 and 7, he said, wherefore I put thee, remember that thou stay of the gift of God which is in thee, by one of my hands, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. So your hand carries the power, so your hand will go here as a point of contact. Look at it here. Now you will pray that Holy Spirit Help me to have my understanding open up. Help me to have what? From today, I want deep understanding in the name of... Now pray for yourself in spirit and understanding. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, I pray for understanding. Lebro zeko tale kando bregezia katala. I pray for understanding in the name of Jesus. I pray for understanding in the name of Jesus. I pray for deep understanding in the name of Jesus. I pray for understanding, O oh God. I pray for understanding in the name of Jesus. I ask that today, Holy Ghost, make me a quick understanding in the name of Jesus. Let my eyes be open. Let my eyes be open. Let my eyes be open in the name of Jesus. I see clearly. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, now be baptized with the spirit of understanding. Amen. By that hand, as a point of contact on forehead, receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Holy Ghost Himself make you an eye of quick understanding. Amen. Jesus, mighty name. Amen. Give thanks to God if you believe you have received. Tell him thank you. You are God's most prized possession. Your worth to him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms come to him as you are he will give you life freedom peace transformation wherever you are pray this prayer after me say Lord Jesus come into my life I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior I believe in my heart 
that he died and rose from the dead to save me now with my mouth I declare you Lord over my life thank you father for saving me in Jesus name thanks for watching to watch our live services visit our website at www.smhos.org if you want us to pray or counsel you please call You can also stay connected through any of our social media accounts. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.